Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. The Daily Compliance News for July 13, 2021, the Cuba Protest Edition. And we begin with that story from the BBC as thousands of Cuban citizens rallied against the government as the economy struggles. What makes this so noteworthy is that Cubans have risked jail time by joining some of the biggest protests in decades against the island's communist government. There is no food, no medicine. They do not let us live, said one protester. The protests are significant because government critics face harsh punishment, as I previously noted. The island's president called for supporters to fight the protests. This, of course, is a direct result of the sanctions placed on Cuba by former President Trump uh, after uh, President Obama had opened up Cuba uh, to U.S. Uh, potential U.S. investment. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what President Biden does. <clears throat> Next up. The Chinese government crackdown on IPOs has reached TikTok as the owner of the app uh, has uh, shelved its IPO intentions after Chinese regulators warned about data security. It's pretty clear that the Chinese government doesn't want U.S. regulators mucking around in Chinese companies, and they're willing to pull Chinese companies from U.S. Uh, financial uh, resources or the financial markets where they would be subject to more scrutiny going forward. So uh, Beijing continues to uh, put the kibosh on Chinese companies uh, going public uh, for financing in U.S. markets. Of course, this certainly protects U.S. investors because there's nothing more opaque than a Chinese company. Uh, Next up, the EU has put its digital tax plan on ICE Uh, and is going uh, after the G20 finance ministers agreed over the weekend to support the global effort. So um, the EU said it was putting its own plan on ICE to achieve, to make it easier to achieve the last mile. Uh, The EU had wanted also to raise the global tax rate to 15. Ireland, of course, wants to uh, continue to lowball everyone with their 12.5%. Uh, It's going to be uh, interesting to see if Ireland can hold out when the G20 um, comes knocking. Of course, this is work for Ireland, and they are the tax haven for certainly most tech companies. And they've taken in about $10 billion a year in corporate tax profit. So um, really small potatoes, you would think, for being a rogue, uh, low-tax state. And our final story comes from NPR. And uh, I'm a recovering trial lawyer, and for those of you who do not think that trial lawyers play games, I will uh, direct you to this NPR article about Remington, who is defending a uh, lawsuit uh, based upon the massacre at Sandy Hook. And uh, Remington uh, provided in discovery some 18,000 files depicting cartoons and emojis, along with personal photos and Um, videos of people participating in go-karting, hunting, and gender reveal parties that were all part of um, Remington's social media outreach. What does this have to do with Sandy Hook, you might ask, and that would be a fair question. Of course, it has nothing to do with it. It's just Remington stalling uh, and trying to avoid the inevitable. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.